Um, I'm joined by you are just one of my favorite people at the moment when I watch football games. Do you know why, Mika? Yeah, let me tell you why you're one of my favorite people. Yeah, because you bring a sense of normality to watching football anyway. Because you just feel like you're enjoying it as well. But I really, I think the reason why I was like, this guy's here to stay, yeah? Is when they, they tried it, bruv. He was on Sky. <laughs> and he tried to talk about the caps. And you said, hey, look, hang, on, hang on a sec. I played for England. I said, nah, man. This guy, he's here to stay, innit? <laughs> Could you see some, some ex-pundits, they, they come and they go. I was like, no, nah, Mika's here to stay, innit? And obviously, I think what it is, you're, you're, you're very, like, you're very warm as a pundit as well. I feel like I, 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 I met you before I even knew you. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and I think, like, honestly, man, like, and bro, man, as a defender as well, like, you've won, you've won things, man. You know what I mean? You know, there's one of there's some pundits out there, and I'm like, you, and we know who the pundits are, innit? <laughs> they, 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 they. I don't want to disrespect the man, because I have played in the Premier League and stuff, but there's certain pundits, and I'm like, big man, you. Come on, man. <laughs> 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 but the thing is, you don't have to be a good player or expert to be a good pundit, though. That's like saying you can't be a, a good manager because you're not playing football. But what? I don't know, but it's like comedy. You've got to be funny, though. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> the credentials, at least. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because, because, okay, like, let's say, right, okay, Thierry Henry, he done some punditry, right? Mm. A lot of people said he wasn't really a good pundit. But at the same time, I could still see his opinion because I was like, okay, you played at the highest level. Mm-hmm. So when he's talking about certain things, I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe his breakdown of certain things weren't really for me, but I could still be like, okay, I, I believe him. But there's certain players that will be slagging off other players. Like you, you scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't do like that so welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Mo Gilligan podcast, Mika. Um, how are you, man? How are you? You seem like you're. You seem like you're always on good vibes. I'm, you see, I'm, your vibes are like my vibes. When, I I, know I, when you ask me to come, I, I want to run down here. I run down the, yeah. the motorway to come because, like, me, I just I like to be positive. You mm. know what I mean? I think there's there's, there's too much negativity in yeah, the world. Yeah. And you can see it in like, punditry and whatever I do. Like, I'm I'm just enjoying life. You mm. know, well, it was a it was a hard start when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, now, like, what have I got to be negative about? Mm. Uh, the working for the Sky, BBC, CBS. What, what, Jesus! What, 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 what could I want? Just listing it off, you know? <laughs> Sky, CBS, BBC. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, what, what have I got to be negative about? I'm not, like, I'm a positive person. Mm. I'm just, I'm just happy I've got this chance. But I, I've got to, like, grab it with two hands, though. Because like you said... Mm. Jokingly before, like there's people that come in and out of the game. Yeah, yeah. And it's difficult to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. And because like I, I did well in my career, but I could have done so much more. Yeah, yeah. So like there's always gonna be someone who's gonna retire who's got more accolades, who's gonna win like, the mm-hmm. trophies, mm-hmm. who might have played for bigger clubs, let's say, who who are gonna be wanting to speak about football. So Yeah, yeah, of course. Like when I go in on on there with Roy Keane mm-hmm. and Gary Neville and or what what they've won in the game, mm. I can't compete with that. Yeah, yeah but I can course. compete in terms of being on on camera, making mm. them feel a little bit different. You know, like because, like you said, Roy Keane when he first come on there, yeah. he was like, "I said burst onto the scene." And he looked at me, like, burst onto the scene. <laughs> but then I, I had to think, I had to think fast. You know, yeah, I think yeah, on my yeah. feet. I was like, "No, hold on, play for England at 18. I didn't, you know, and it yeah, went on, yeah, and went, yeah. on, went on. So, like the punditry, it's difficult, but. I think to stay consistent, you've got to stay relevant as well. And that, that's going to be the hardest challenge for me. But I think it's also really nice when you see like ex-players after they finish football, because punditry, it feels like you really get to see their personality a lot as well. Do you know what I mean? It's hard though, but it, like there's so many people who've got good personalities, footballers that I've played with. Mm. But like as soon as they go in the camera, they're like a bit like camera shy. I'm like, don't, don't be shy. Show people what mm. you've got. Like a lot of people saying, oh, I didn't know you'd be, you know, good on the camera and whatnot. I was like, but, you know, if you look at Man City's videos, MCTV back in the day, it was all me on there just messing around anyway. So, like, I always, like, I did drama at school. I always like to, to mess around and all that stuff. So, um, what I've got to do, though, is get that balance right, though, because I don't want people to just come on there and think, oh, he's just here for a laugh and a joke. Because I'm yeah, making yeah, some serious yeah. points. So, it's just about finding that balance. But I'm loving it, man. Loving it. 
So, so tell me a little bit about like before football, like early Mika, like from Leeds, Chapel Town. Yeah, yeah, That's the hood I know about. Listen, listen, it's greasy. It's yes. greasy up the office, you know. You look at guys always talking about London, London, this, like, listen. <laughs> Leeds, he's, he's peak up the off, you know. I know about Leeds. Let me tell you something. Leeds, yeah? You know what it is as well, yeah? There's hoods it, There's hoods everywhere, isn't it? But like, especially like, you know, Leeds, Manchester, you know, all these places. It's a hood, but it's cold as well. That's what I'm Physical saying. cold, bro. It's freezing up there. Like, you see like in London, you can have a puffer jacket and not really be that cold. Like today, you need a puffer jacket, yeah? But in Leeds, it's the hood and it's cold, it, yeah, cold. It's cold. Snowing. It's freezing. That's a real hood, man. Yeah. It's, it's like Chicago. Like us Londoners, we're like Brooklyn, isn't it? You better like Philly, it's really cold. <laughs> nah, it's, you know, serious though. It is cold up north. Yeah. But no, I, I, I never claimed to be like some, some hard man and all that, but I know like the, that, that ends up that I mm. come from it's, it's, it's real life you know what yeah, I mean yeah, 100%, uh, 100%. I never like try hide that mm. that's just that's just where I'm from mm. um, and it was like it was, it was always tough because I've seen some things that like people would never want to see I've seen, I seen someone getting beat up with a hammer I've seen I've seen we've all seen gun oh, fired see, gun fired uh, we all see I didn't see <laughs> 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 that's, that's it we are <laughs> I see him get slapped in his face once, and I said, "No, nah, I never want to get slapped." <laughs> yeah, well, I got like he was on the floor, and it was like that. That moment just changed everything in my life. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Like, I, I, I can't, I can't see this. So, like, but on the floor and keep going and going and going, and that like for for a couple of years. You talk about early life that just messed with my mental health a little okay, bit. Like, yeah, like yeah, just, yeah. I don't want to see the but like I don't just want to. Paid like Chapel Town in a bad light because there's so many like mm. positive people doing great community work as well. So it's like mm. a bit of both, but yeah, early life. I loved, I, I loved it. Like yeah. I knew no different. You know what I mean? And, and how did you get into football? Was you like because you know what it is with like you know I've, I've, when I was young, you grew up. There's always someone and you're like, oh, like he's good for his age. Like you know, there'll be like an eight year old who's twisting up like sixteen year olds. Like so, was you always like the kid in the ends who was the prospect? Or did it come a little bit later on in life? Or was football just, this is what I wanted to be? Nah, so there was there was one other guy who was called called Venom. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's, <laughs> real, his real name was Dwight. Okay. And he he was the one, like, in, in Chapel Town, whatnot. Like, he was, he was playing for Bradford and whatnot, but he was playing, like, he was strong. He was fast, technical. So he was the one who everyone thought, he's definitely going to make it. By mm-hmm. far, like, the, the best player at that age. I've seen, yeah. you know what I mean? And then I was I was there in the background and I was all I used to play with him. He was a couple of years older than me. But then there was one time where like he, he tried to get past me and I shoulder badge going, oh he's strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all his man them are laughing at all you know, like he's wrong, yeah, yeah, all, all his yeah, man yeah, them yeah, are, yeah. are laughing at him, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? That's worse so than nothing. Yeah, it's worse than nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's worse than nothing. So all these men are laughing at him. But I'm thinking this could go either two ways, either like I'm fighting here. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm gonna get some respect, and luckily, I earned his res- respect from that. So I always looked up to him as as a footballer, yeah, yeah. and then um, he went down a different a different path. Mm. But I always used to play with like people older than me, and like at school, I was playing like ages above and, yeah. and whatnot. And I was just, I always felt like it's not being big headed, but I was always better than the people my age. Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. But that the the higher you go, the harder it becomes. I was playing for school. I was playing in net. Playing that, grabbing the ball and dribbling past everyone and scoring goals. That's how easy it was. Mm. Then I went to Leeds City Boys. Which mm. Went to Leeds United, got released at 10. Yeah. And that was tough. What's it like though for a 10 year old to get released? That's what I mean. I think me- mental health is like, it's just so important because mm. everyone always sees like, you know what you see? You see the, the cars, the houses and all mm. that. But if, you, if, you, if your mind's not right, you can easily veer off a different way. And um, like mentally, like I think he's one of the most in- important if you want to be as a footballer because there was times I'd, I'd go to my room and just cry. You know, yeah. when I got released, I was like, it's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can't tell your friends that, like, oh, you're, uh, you're training tomorrow at Leeds and like, oh, I got, got released. You know what I mean? It's like, it's tough. But again, later on in life, it makes you stronger. So 
if I want to have that, like I've had times in, in my career later on, I've done really well, but there's times when I've been relegated. So, but that sort of prepared me for later in life. Yeah, 100%. I think, but for a, for a young kid to go through that, difficult. Yeah, yeah. Very difficult. Because I think, it, you know, as I said, if you're that young prospect in your area, everyone's almost like putting their chips on you, like gambling on you. Like, and I've seen it where you've got this young you, and I was like, bro, don't do the bad stuff. You're, you're, you're not about this life, innit? Yeah. And I could imagine what that must do on the mental health of some, especially young people now, because when you're looking at footballers now, it's almost like footballers are getting younger and younger and becoming world stars. Mm. Like Mbappe, for an example. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You look at him at 21, like, so I, 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 could, I can't imagine, because I think for me as a kid, like, I grew up being, I want to be a footballer. Mm -hmm. But I'm at 16 now. And it's not, yeah. it's, you, you miss your boat. It's, it's not happening, boy. And you're like, come on, man. Arsene Wenger might just come down to, <laughs> you might come down to two bit common. <laughs> like, you never know. Like. So, yeah, but I think definitely, you know, the, the mental health in, in football is so good that you, you, you speak about that. And you're speaking about that now. If, you know, if there's any young footballers that are listening, because I think it's such an integral part of the game now. 100%. You know, like it wasn't. When I used to watch football when I was like a teenager, it wasn't just that you play football, bang goals, isn't it? But you don't look at the other side of it. It's social media as well, though. You know, it affects all of us. You know, like sometimes you've had comments, I've had comments before. Mm. I don't know if it's not racial or anything like that, but just like you could be like having someone like gassing you up and you're like, you feel like a million dollars, you know what mm. I mean? And then like get them one or two negative, but it hurts deep inside here, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and we're, yeah. we're older, so imagine what he's doing. Even for the kids and like social media can be used in so like positive light. I love social media, but also there's that side of it where they're putting too much pressure on kids too young. You know what I mean? Like there's all these videos about they can do this skill and that skill and that. But really, it's like when they say smoke and mirrors, it's not it's not real life. It's yeah. just like a, a fantasy, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh and it's not it's not real. Like there's people on there, like people see Ronaldo, like they don't want to see now, but you don't see what goes on behind that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, think, I think that's what a lot of people don't see. If you're not talking about like Ozil and stuff like that. Yeah, we all know he's earning too much money for, for what he's doing for the team. Mm. But like mentally, we don't know what's going on behind. He could be working harder than anyone. Mm -hmm. The only, like it's me, I'm in the media now. I've got to sort of change that perception of the way football are perceived because it's not, mm. it's not great. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Um, but at the same time, we have to understand that there's people earning 10, 15 grand a year. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes it, it does feel like footballers or people in the media are rubbing it in their faces. So it's just getting that, that balance, man. Yeah, 100%. How was your early, you know, because you, uh, you was on loan at, was at Oldham, right? You went to Oldham. I went to Oldham at 11, yeah. yeah. Yeah, then you went to Man City. At 14, yeah. So talk to me about this Man City team. Because this is Man City before, <laughs> before, the, before the money came. Like before the riches, yeah. Before it was like it went to because for me it felt like real life football manager happened. <laughs> like I remember that day very vividly on Sky as an Arsenal fan. Like, Why didn't they go to oh, man. They made you. Oh man! And the thing is that squad wasn't a bad squad. Yeah, it was good. It was it was definitely on the up because I remember like Joey Barton was there. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Island Stephen as well. Island. Bad boy player. Daniel though, Sturridge. Sturridge as well. Ishmael Miller, Nader Manua, Michael Johnson. Mm -hmm. We had some we had some good players. Like it was the reason why a lot of like the youth with the youth academy was so good because you like they were spending a lot of money on bringing the players through. Like mm -hmm. Sean Mike Phillips was the was the first one, you know. Shout out Sean. He was the one to come through and give everyone a little bit of hope back then. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was lucky enough to, to play for him for, for Man City in England, but back then it was it was it was different because it was more it's a family club and it still is a family club now to a certain extent. But like, there's so much pressure now on, on the players to do well, which pressure is not from the pressure. Pressure sometimes pressure is good, but like the infrastructure now from when I first went there it was just crazy. Like I remember sitting down with. With Khaldun, and he just said, within 10 years, we're going to build up the infrastructure, we're going to offer loads of jobs out, build up the community. All that work that he's done, a lot of people talk about like the uh, the money we spend on players, but the money yeah. he's done around the city has just been incredible. 
And like when the investment came in, it was always going to be harder. You've got to step your game up. Yeah. Not it's saying like, that it's like that with, with, with any team that gets a huge investment. You look at Chelsea, for an example, as well. You know, it's, it's difficult. But, you know, I won a Premier League. I never believed I would do that. I thought when I was young, because like when it was, you know, the mess about I me, mean, <laughs> like I thought at 18, 19, 20, 21, I would, I would have to leave Man City. Soon as that investment came in, I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, 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 I'm here for life. You know what I mean? You can't move me now. <laughs> you can't get rid of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, like, I, I wanted to, like, to me in my career, when I was a young boy, FA Cup was like, I wanted to win FA Cup. So I ticked that box. And to, to win a Premier League. But I know people like try to play down people's achievement, but winning the Premier League, no matter who would it, like it's a massive achievement. So when mm. I did that, it was just incredible. I'm just I was I was thankful for, for the investment in the end. Yeah. So you're sitting there now, you know, you're at Man City, come through the ranks, yeah, and then this investment comes. So are you in a place of like you're saying that I'm here to stay, but how does the how does the mood change? Because the way that you described it really sounds like me and Amanda. Everyone's everyone's like a local boy from somewhere. Do you know what I mean? And then now overnight, it's almost like it reminds me of when I used to work in retail and I'm having so much fun. Stock cream guy, you know what I mean? There's delivery guy. Everyone knows each other. Then it's like, yeah, uh, manager's leaving and we've got um, a new company taking over. My name's Greg. I'm gonna be the boss looking over. You're like. Big man, who is this guy, bro? You're telling me to put the coat hangers to the left. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So did it become more competitive? Was there was it was it clicky at times? It was it was, it was crazy. I went from well, I'm not afraid to say one of the highest paid at the time to one of the lowest paid in like six months. Wow! So I'm like scratching my head. I'm thinking like I was supposed to be like I was you know I was playing for England and I was like the big investment. I was supposed to be the big. Because you, you was linked with a lot of clubs. You were linked with Arsenal. I was linked with Arsenal, but yeah. yeah. But Wenger, Wenger didn't want to pay the, pay the money at the time. I swear like, down. No, so basically, there was che- Chelsea was interested, Man U was interested, and Arsenal. Yes, I remember this. So Arsenal didn't want to pay the money. Man U did want to pay the money, but City won't sell me to Man U. Because of course the rivalry. And then Chelsea, there was never really off on the tape, but it was genuine interest. There was a couple of times Chelsea. So then mm. Arsenal, so I my former dipped at this time. Yeah, so yeah. I was a big man in the team. Yeah. Next minute I was I was playing awful. Yeah. Then like Arsenal got offered me again. Yeah. And Wenger turned it down. And I was, oh man. He turned it down. He snubbed me, man. Bruv. Yeah. And I remember them times because the, the center backs we had them times. Who do we have? We have to think it was we think our self mystery, bro. I don't know if yes. you got <laughs> and I remember that so vividly. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. He's so such best. a so best, so I don't know what the brother's name is, yeah. The baddest thing is, I met him recently at a soccer aid, innit? Such a blessed guy, yeah. And I'll be like, brother, I remember you at United, innit? <laughs> I don't want to disrespect the man. But our Arsenal, when we played United in that Champions League, yeah? Oh, oh, man. I said, come on, man. Can we get our money back? We didn't even pay anything. But I said, oh, no, no, no. We were struggling them times, man. That's when I, because I vividly remember we needed a centre back. And it's mad because I feel like at that time as an Arsenal fan, remember us getting linked with almost everyone and we never got them, but they went somewhere else and it was good. Like Gary, like Gary Cahill, yourself. Um, so many centre backs. And we just get smooths up. The, who do, uh, Senderos. <laughs> Senderos, man. <laughs> why, are you, why are you making me laugh? Oh, Senderos, you man. You can't do that. These are the guys we had, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Getting pumped against United, you know. <laughs> getting pumped, bro. Henri had just left. We're in the Emirates. We was like, yeah, it's going to be great when we get to the Emirates. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, man. Don't get me wrong, we had that Andy Bayor, Abue, a couple, a couple of men. Yeah, Abue, and Abue was amazing. Andy Bayor was. A- Abue was, was just vibes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> let's not lie. Let's not lie. Abue, yeah? He was just a good vibe. Why are you doing to me? Abue was just vibes, man. He's just, man. He's just, he's just, 
So he's just, he's just he's just doing the zonto in the G three. You know the you know guys. He's just one of those guys, isn't it? But you need them. You need them guys in the squad. Don't get me wrong. You need them guys in the squad, isn't it? Hey, what's going on, bro? Good to see you, man. I like this guy, you know. You don't even stop. I like this appeal, guy. Hey, that is him. Oh, stop it, bro! Stop mounting the yammin. <laughs> nah, man, you gotta, get, you gotta get a dietitian to do it, man, you know? No! I'm from Africa! <laughs> I'm African, man! <laughs> Stop it! Alright! It's been a steamed oh. fish! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got the English place as well! Oh. Hey, man, what, what, what you got there, boy? Anyway! Boy, <laughs> <Wait, wait. laughs> what you got there, man? Stop it! Don't worry about it! <laughs> Jack Wilshire and them. Oh. You go over there, everywhere. <laughs> Pounded water. <laughs> oh. I don't smell that steamed fish, everywhere. I've got tears, man. <laughs> you know, because that's what happens, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine yeah. that Arsenal. Who was there? We had Jack Wilshire. We had Jenkinson. Or somebody, Ramsey. Ramsey's Welsh, so he didn't know what was going on. I've never had pounded, yeah? <laughs> it looks lovely! <laughs> oh. oh, shit. So, wow. how was it? You see, like. You see, so, so you're just gonna try to be serious now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what it is, yeah? As I started thinking, I was like, nah, I'm from this is man, you know. <laughs> oh. Wow. You know, if you used to diss someone in school, you're like, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Sorry, man. Like everyone's laughing at you, like, yeah, sorry, man. Sorry, you felt, but you felt bad in the end. You felt sorry, bad. but it was funny, innit? It was funny, man. Oh, man. So, like, what was it like playing for England at them times? Yeah, in- England was uh, obviously a massive honour. Playing for England is one of the best things you can do, but it was like, it was clicky. Do you know what I mean? Like, you had all the United boys, all the Chelsea boys. Mm. Or Liverpool. Because Rio said the same thing recently. In the he, he said the same thing. And then them guys were like, it was real rivalry back then, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 of course. And then you had like the, the in between us, all the other, like I was at Man City, Jolie Lescott was at Everton, mm. uh, Ashley Young was at Watford, mm. um, and there might have been a couple more. And we just used to chill together. That's how I'm so close to Jolie now, because okay. we met when we went to England, and it was just so awkward. You have to like, find bridges, that's mad. It was just mad. It was fine, just, you know what I mean? Latch onto somebody, please. Do you know what I mean? But, <laughs> in fairness, Steven yeah. Gerrard, like, you might have heard the story before though, but I didn't have my boots. Like, so you know, like, you have a kit man and whatnot, to put your boots in when you're ready to go. So, took down to England, like, first time being, like, obviously, I got a call from Steve McLaren. Mm. It, was, it was in the barbers, but I put it down because I thought someone was joking because I was only 18. I heard this, this happens a lot. As yeah, well. I, I, thought, I, thought it was, I thought it was joking and they said it. So I'm all excited. Normally, I always take my own boots everywhere because I like to be prepared, but I thought it was a bit big time now. Do you know what I mean? Play mm. for England, mate. You did my boots, mate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm here for it, so. I'm here for it. <laughs> so yeah, no, Chap with a kit, man, he sent my boots, but he, he sent me two left feet. Yeah. So the first training session, I got no was boots. For you, man. Nah. So Stevie Gerrard lent me his boots uh-uh. on the first like um, training session. Played with Stevie Gerrard's boots. Man, I'm only 18. Yeah. Like, I've only made my debut. So I'm like starstruck. Even to, even to have to ask, I've just said like, Kitman's giving me the wrong boots. Like, and he was just like, I, I just I, I rated him for that straight away, and uh, mm. he, he he made me uh, be able to to settle in because yeah, of, yeah. of just that moment, and then. From that, he always asked if I was all right. So, mm. yeah, big up Stevie Jarrett. No, that sounds, it sounds weird because I think for us in the outside, we just, I think the naivety for us as fans, we just think all you players know each other because we only see you guys really, like, even like, let's say you're in a tunnel and you're like, oh, you're right, mate. And you just think everyone in England is all bredgings. They must have played under 21s with each other. But then you realise, well, not everyone has played under 21s. You might have had some people who was playing football and, didn't play football. So you never really understand what it's like for a player going to play for their country. 
but also feeling like, oh, like, okay, like, I don't know no one here. Do you know what I mean? You have to sort of build that respect, like, as soon as you go into training. Because mm. I remember, like, cause I, I was a small, small name. Like, a lot of people saying, like, Richards is playing for Man City, was struggling in the Premier League. Like, if he, if he was a winger, you knew what time it was because you weren't getting past me back in them doors. Everyone talking about marauding fullbacks. I started this marauding fullback <laughs> nonsense. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on. Give me, give me some, you know what I mean? 18. I was, me and Robin was having battles of our lives. That's Robin, like, Robin was saying, like, yeah. one of the hard, Bale, one of the hardest. So, when you talk about this marauding, right? I'm like, listen, mm. doing that back in, the, back in the day. So, but when you go in training, that's where, like, you earn your respect. Mm. And if you train well or you do something good in training, that's when you see all the other pros. I'm like, oh, you want to speak to me now? You know okay. what I mean? One of those ones. So, yeah. but that's like in anything in life, though, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you've got to work your way up to, to earn your respect. But mm. I, I think it's difficult. For, I think that's why I love what Gareth Southgate's done now because he's integrated this sort of confidence and this belief within the group, no matter who you play with. Mm. And I think that's why they're playing a lot better than they did. Because if you look at the players, yeah. Ashley Cole, John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, Gary Neville, and then Skull, Skulls, Lampard, Gerard, Joe Cole. Beckham. Beckham. Yeah, Beckham there. Oh, Beckham, Owen, Owen Denver, Hargreaves. Hargreaves. Even Heskey, Big Heskey, Cole, laying it down. Yeah, Heskey. Yeah, it was it. And it, it did seem like, it always felt like back then when, you know, a new player got like, oh, you know, this player's been called up to the English felt like a big deal and we wanted to see that player because it felt I always felt like with the England team back then it was like how did this team we always say now when you look back and they should have won the World Cup but I think when you look back at the tournaments you, you can you, from what you're saying you can understand it now if you if you were clicky and all the Man United boys were United Liverpool etc you can be like well, I can understand why we might not have won the World Cup now because everyone was all brethren and you know after the game you know you want to sit down you hear um, the, the Spanish squad eat, eat paella together mm-hmm. and all sit at a table and stuff. You know, I just feel like, well, like, what? You know, like England ain't doing that. No, over like playing chips or something, or, you know. I think it's different over here, though, because we, we build people up so much, don't we? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, they build me up. Like, I was talking about, I need to replace Gary Neville. I was, I was only mm-hmm. 18, 19, like, playing for England. But I, I'm going to be one of England's. I was not going to be one of England's best right backs. So I've already played right back. Two years, I was playing centre back in the in the youth team and centre mm. midfield, yeah, and now yeah. they're bigging me up to be the best right. I was never, I, I did a good job, you know what I mean. But I was still had so much to learn. Mm. But like to put this pressure on me just to bring you down. That's mm. why you see when I'm doing my, my punditry now, I rarely pick out like faults in people until I've given them enough time mm. to be able to do what they need to do. You know what Definitely. I mean? Like if you're experienced and you make a mistake, yeah, I'll call you out. But if you're a young player, no time to to improve. Mm. And how is that pressure as a young player? If you're being, you know, tired as like this guy's going to be the next big right back for England, he's going to replace Gary Neville. You know, he's at Man City. He's, you know, got this young squad around him. He's the next prospect to happen. How is it handling that pressure? Because I always, you know, I think like now sometimes the pressure happens earlier with social media. There's a lot of young players I know about through social media now where I can follow their Instagrams and see how they're getting on. Whereas back then, it was almost like, oh, this guy made his debut. Cool, I'm going to check out that guy and look out for him and hopefully he does well. So how how did you handle that pressure back then? Like, I was fearless when I was when I was younger. I, I just didn't care about anyone. Like, I didn't care about anything. But then I started reading papers. Mm. I was getting 9 out of 10, mm. 8 out of 10. And then there was a time under um, McLaren where we didn't, Qualify for for the Euros, mm. lost to Croatia three two. Yeah, and then like I remember that it was raining. Yeah, it was raining. I was holding that umbrella. <laughs> I'm not saying he gave me my debut. I'm not disrespecting him. I'm not there to there to go there. I just remember the, yeah, the <laughs> it, was, it was tough. So then that's when it changed when we didn't qualify. Like I, still, I, still, I was reading papers. Oh, four out of ten, five out of ten. Oh, he's he's not good enough for this level now. Even though I was I was playing well up to that point in my England career, um, he needs to be put down to the twenty ones. He's not he's not re- he's not ready for this level. So then that's when I started thinking about things. Up to now, mm-hmm. I, I I was fearless. I didn't care. I got on the pitch and just trying to brook man up. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That that's the way it was. Yeah. But then as soon as I started reading. Believe in the hype. You don't let that, that, that start believing the hype. I actually started to believe the hype. 
But then when it was negative, I started to believe the negative. And that's when, and you talk about young players now, you're in a false sense of security because you look at the young boys now, they might play for Man United, they might have 500,000 followers. Do you know what I mean? But, but followers don't, doesn't mean anything. You're not achieving nothing in life. If you're using your followers and your interaction's really good and you're using it, of course it is, but they get, again, in this false sense of security that are having loads of followers is, is, is a good thing and it sort of takes their, their mind off what they truly should be doing. It's working hard to be the best footballer they can be. You see, for you playing football, did you have a lot of good people around you when you were playing professional football? At like, at like your height? You know what? No. Mm. I, I had, I had, family around me was always cool. But then like, you see like different people from coming from different angles. And you know, you got these people around you who always want to like, they, they tell you what you want to hear. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So you can't sort of see the, the snake issues because they're telling you what you want to hear or oh, you're brilliant or oh, you should do this and do it. you know what I mean but then <coughs> it's only like the older you get you realise like it was just looking out for yourself like mm-hmm. you know what it's like as a black person like if you come from the hood as, as, you, as you want to say then when someone does well everyone feels like you have to take everyone with you you know mm-hmm. what I mean and I, I, I was taking, I was, I was paying for family members, still pay for family members now, pay for friends, pay for friends of friends. And then I, I just said to me, like, I, I can't do this. I can't, I can't do this no more. You know what I mean? That must be so hard as well, like, because I guess for yourself, at the time, you're playing football, which is a sport which can change, you know, injury can change your whole life. You know, I think, because I, 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 I'm, I'm very intrigued of um, uh, American, like American football. I watched the game, but I've, I'm, I think I'm more intrigued about the sports side of it and the nutrition, and especially with NFL, because how much they put into it, you know, you've got guys who are on mad contracts and guys who one injury and that's it and they're done for. And I think with football, you know, you're concentrating on your game, whether you're in training, they're showing you this, but, and then it's like when you finish training, you're done and you've done your nutrition and your sports and your therapy, you go home and then you have to deal with that where you should just be relaxing and chilling and enjoying the comforts of your nice car or your nice house or whatever. It must be, it must be really difficult. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 always, it's always difficult. In, injury is, 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 is the worst to deal with. Mm. Like, like, injury, like... When, when you're at football, football is so good because it takes your mind off so many things. It's mm. like, it's incredible. Like, it saves so many people. That's why during the pandemic, having football on, it's, it's been amazing. Mm. for people's mental health and whatnot. Like, going home or not being able to play, like, injury, like, is... Like, I, 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 you know how positive I am. I'm always laughing and joking, but injury, like, nearly sent me to depression. Mm. Because, again, talk about believing the hype and whatnot, and then believing the negative. Then, end of my career, I was at Aston Villa, and like I was come there as an experienced pro and whatnot, but then like my knee wasn't right. And Tim Sherwood was there and whatnot. He was fine. Had a program, no problems. Another manager comes in, and then my knee was just like I was taking like five like five inje- injections a week just to go out and train. Mm-mm. Do you know what I mean? Like drawing fluid out and then pumping some in in into my knee, mm. and that's how like mentally like sick it, it was because I was just like so obsessed with football. I didn't care about my health at, uh, afterwards. Um, but I just, I, I didn't want to say goodbye to, 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 to the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then yeah. like when all you know from when we talk about young, like playing football and whatnot, and then someone saying, oh, you're not good enough or you're out. I had like probably five knee injuries, five operations. Yeah. And Every time you try to come back stronger, you try to like prove your doubt was wrong and whatnot. But it was it was a tough time. That, that that's the lowest I've ever been in football, mm. and I didn't really have no one to talk to. Like one one friend, a man called Madge, you know, we spoke and he helped me out massively. But like because you're the breadwinner of the family, not just you know, your family media, it's like friends. Like people think, oh, 
you can't be suffering. So you put on this like brave face all the time. Like, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm a man, I'm cool. But really, I was like, I was borderline depressed. Do you know what I mean? And people say, well, how can you be depressed early 50 grand a week? The money's irrelevant. It, it's crazy, it's crazy. It sounds stupid to say that, but yeah, like, once, you, once you're in there, and like money, you don't even think about the money, you just rather be happy. So I want to talk about dark days and switching over. That that was the hardest thing for me. Mm. And how do you switch off from injury? What is there is there things that you find where you're like, oh, because like anything, you know, for me as a comic, when I'm at home, I don't watch comedy. That's the last thing I'm going to watch because that's what I do every day. I'm looking for the funny in everything to be like, oh, I can write that in a joke. I can use that in a sitcom. I could possibly make that. That's what. That's how my life. Is, is this is how it is every day whether it's business side of stuff whether it's the stage um, the future that's how I look at it so when I'm at home I do the opposite cook love cooking um, watch documentaries animals um, that's that's the stuff that really gets my mind away from what it is that is my passion and things that are just almost going back to like your hobbies as a kid you know when you're kids kids it's like painting why do you like painting I don't know I just like painting it doesn't because they want to be an artist. It just relaxes them as such. It relaxes their mind. So when you are injured, do you, do you, did you find new things that you liked? New things you wanted uh-huh. to explore? No, I think once you're in football, and you can have hobbies and whatnot, mm-hmm. but you're thinking, like, how can, how can I get back? That's just on, on, on your mind. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, like, like when I, before I got injured, I was playing. When we won the league, I played more Premier League games than, um, than, than Zabaleta, who then went on to take my place. Mm. So when I'm injured, I'm not thinking about what can I do like to keep in mind. I'm just thinking about how do I get back? What do I need to do? I need to work twice as hard, three times. You know, I was working out like three, four times a day. I over, overkill because you just want to be back in the team. And it's like, like imagine playing from 17, the team, like you come through the academy and at 24, 25, like someone's taking your, your place in the team. Like, how, 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 how we not learned to deal with that? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I had a setback when I was younger, but like, I always backed myself. I always thought, like, no one's, no one's going to take my place. Mm. And that's why I, I rate Zabaleta, because he's, like, in terms of ability-wise, he didn't have ability of a, a Danny Alves or a Macon going forward, on, but he had heart, he had desire, he had everything yeah. that people talk about. So, like, switching off for me, I never really switched off, man. So honest, I couldn't, I couldn't, and that's what you know made me de- nearly depressed in the end. So you didn't play golf? Can't be. Golf? Me? <laughs> <laughs> you might you see the size of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might mean not a chance, <laughs> not a chance. I did. To be fair, though, I do. I did a little bit of a clay pigeon shooting. Okay. Yeah. 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 But yeah, there's um, the barber jackets. In there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The farmer, I'm up north. I can get away with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. I do the property stuff on the side and all that, but mm. actually taking away my mind away from it, it it's difficult because I'm yeah. I'm obsessed with football. That's mm. why like I went into punditry as well yeah. because like I watch every single game mm. possible. I just love football, so like not having it. If I want to pundit now, I don't know what I would do. I, I don't know about the coaching side because mm. like these these young boys now like a bit attitude. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I'm not, I'm not attitude. <laughs> Like, you'd be like a roadman coach though. <laughs> I think that's the kind of coach you'd be like you laps no 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 do 10 fouls in press I'm about laps what so you can run around and think and enjoy yourself nah bro pain cuts pain <laughs> so, so why do you say you didn't go into coaching because I think when I look at coaching now like a lot of people say coaching is very hard you know, you've got to do your badges and stuff but is would you say like is it the challenge of coaching or is it something in terms of coaching where you're just like, that's just not the side of the game that I, I enjoy as such? No, I will definitely do my coaching badges just so when I'm doing like analysis and stuff like I can think a bit more. But like I left, I left home at 14, 15, just left school. I think I left a couple months before my last year to go play for Man City. I left all my family, all my friends in, that, in Leeds behind me. Uh, I've got loads of friends in Manchester as well. But like people don't understand, like coaching is so hard. It's it's like the, the, the pressure that comes with it as well. And there's good sides. I don't just want to talk about it. it's all bad. It's just great being football. Being in football is amazing. Mm. But I 
give so much to the game when I was young. Like, I need to give more to my family. Like, the punditry allows me to watch games, do what I need to do, but still have the family life. Like, if you want to be a good coach, I'm talking about top coaches, like, best in the world. Like, you don't get, there's, there's no rest time. Yeah. 20, 24, 7. So, for me, that doesn't work in, in, in what I want to do because I give so much to, to football. Like, you know, I've got pretty much no knee. Like, my knee will be swelling up now just from, from sitting here. Well, I need to give some to, to my family. I've got, I've got, I've got a son now. He's gonna be four in March, so oh, I need to, yeah, I need to give some some time. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that parent that just brings home the the, the, the money. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I want to spend time because you know what it's like. You know what I like? My dad, dad's a rasta, isn't it? Yeah. Like he's not probably told me he's loved me in his whole life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. It's like that. It's like tough love, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's that tough love, like. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, so I need to make, I need, I need to make sure I'm there. I'm, I'm that parent that's, that's there. It's true now. T- tell me, tell me now. How many times have that done to you? Tell me, tell me. I bet you can count on, on one hand. <laughs> as soon as you said that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you watch those films and it all comes flashing back. I'm like, man. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Rasta's funny. <spot. laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, can I get a hug with you? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, that one I've got. <laughs> well, just think about it now. I didn't just go. What do you go? Just think about it. <laughs> Oh, that one got me, man. Oh, shit. Oh, that one really got me, boy. <laughs> but the thing is, though, you know, you're laughing because you know exactly. I'm, I'm telling you, because you know. Oh, man. So would you say now, like, now you've finished punditry, like, you're, you're living life, essentially? Because you, I think, like, as a footballer, you know, you would live life, essentially. You know, you're playing football, which is what you love, your passion. You know, you earn a great wage from it. But is when I say living life, like, you know, you're living for your son, the family moments, experiences with your family. Yeah, just more, more balanced life. I think, like, footballers, great life. Unbelievable. Like, I won't take it back for nothing, but you sort of, you, you can't enjoy life to the fullest because, like, you can't even go to, like, you know, I just want to go to McDonald's and have a Big Mac. Mm. I'm not worried about, like, getting weighed in the morning, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, okay. Yeah, it's just like, all them sort of things where, like, like routine, routine, routine. Up at like, quarter to seven in the morning. Like go, go to training. Get your weight done. You can only eat this. Make sure you're here by that time. I'm just like, I didn't like it. I yeah. didn't like. I, I love the football side, but I didn't like being told, "Oh, you got to do this. You got to do this all the all, all the time." And now I'm just a bit more more flexible. Like mm. we know football is going to be a weekend. Probably maybe a, a, week, a midweek game. Or, or whatnot. So that gives me I'm working three, four maximum days a week. Mm. And then I can do my charity. My dad's got like um some charities in Ethiopia. I can help him with that stuff. Mm. Like I can go back to my old community in um in Chapel Town, help them with some just sort of stuff that I just mm. I think they're gonna make a difference t- to me. Rather because when you're in it, that is you know you know that you know what the the, the, the protective that you've been on. Like sometimes it's just about Work, 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 work. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. And you don't get to actually enjoy. You know what I mean? Like, you just, you're so far in something that, like, you just lost, you lost within what you're doing. And it's like having that, it's, it's a good mindset to have when you're working out. But then you're forgetting, like, sometimes you have to step back mm-hmm. and enjoy what you've got around you and appreciate what you have yeah, rather than thinking, oh, what can I do next? What can I earn on this? It's like that. Done chasing, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done chasing. I'm, and that's why I just I love the punditry because I can I can give as much as I can, but then I can have my days off when I'm not when I'm not working. Yeah, I think it's so important. I know the first couple of years when I first ever like started you know touring as a comic, I've, I've always wanted to put on my own show as a comic. That was like my dream. I was gonna have a show where it's me and everyone comes out for me, and I can just do comedy. And when that when that first thing started happening. It was, you know, not going to. I remember I didn't see my mum in like three months. 
Like, I'm, I'll speak to on the phone, but not go down there or, you know, check my sister or whatnot and stuff. Um, it was all those things where I was very much, it's 100%, you're, you're so driven to work. And I think that also comes from how, how we've grown up because we sometimes grow up in an environment where we know that, you know, like we, we've seen our parents work, work, work to get the nice sofa. But then I'm still going to put the cling film on it yeah. because this is a nice sofa. I work very hard for this. So would you guys take off the cling film now? No, it's going to keep there. Like there's a reason why we have the nice glasses in the cabinet. Do you know what I mean? I remember going to our friend's house. I'm like, you want to drink out of wine glasses? Juice. Well, we got them in a nice cabinet. And that's obviously because my mum looks after stuff and she's very proud of her stuff. But it's also like, well, let's enjoy them, mum. Why have we got these glasses in the cabinet? No one's coming round. <laughs> like, let's put a little Capri Sun in there, man. <laughs> you know, a little sarsaparilla in that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but 100%, I think it's definitely about really, it's, I think, I, I remember listening to Eddie Hearn recently on a podcast and he said he had to sacrifice so much because he's always working. So he can't go to his, you know, his daughter's birthdays and stuff like that. Um, was there a lot you had to sacrifice? Would you say football? Yeah, I, there, was, there was, there was, like, I didn't go to, um, like, parties when I was younger. I used to go to a place called Evo's, I think, in the, in the 50s or the 60s. And my dad, like, he'd let me go, like, once when I didn't have football for the next day. Mm. And, like, I missed out on just enjoying that, that, that lifestyle of growing up, you know, going from boy, boy to a man. Mm. Um, and my dad just said, like, if you want it, then leave all that aside. And at the time, you're like, you know what I mean? Like, kissing your teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, just like, what, what do you mean? You know, you don't understand. You don't understand back then. But he's seen it for, he's seen the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Let, let's say, um, there's been, there's been certain things in my life that, because my dad's, I've got four sisters and, and, and three brothers. Like it, it, it's difficult because not all got the same mums and, and whatnot. Um, I just feel like because I didn't live with them all, mm. like I, I've missed part of, of of their life. If you know what I mean, and I just I wish football. Like when I talk about sacrifices, I've I've gone ten, fifteen years without really knowing my own brothers and sisters. Because I'm not in my household. Yeah, yeah, so you talk sense. about sacrifices, like, you know, the, the many times when our oh, sisters coming round and going to a party and whatnot, we'll see them and go, and I've, got, I've not got that relationship with my own family at times. Mm-hmm. Talk about the, that driven, no, no, no. And when we talk about sacrifices, it's just, but now looking back, I, I don't regret it mm-hmm. because I had, to, I had to do something to get to a place where I, I can be here. Now you know being, being being with you, but now I know that it's not all about the, the, the money, the fame. It's not. It's not. I, I tell you know people watching this like, of course we all want more followers. We all want more money. Of course we do. But it's not the epitome. That's just like that's just the bonus. 100%. It's just the bonus. And like I try to like hammer this point home so much, but people, when you're in it, you don't you don't see it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like. And what I might need to live might be different to you. So everyone's got to be comfortable in what they want. You know, I can't speak on there, but like the, the, why I'm so happy now is because I'm just content. I'm not chasing anything. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I can go, I can go like, I'm in London now. If COVID wasn't here, I go see my sister who lives in London. I mm. passed by my sister in Birmingham when I go, but I go to Manchester, you know what I mean? All the things that I couldn't do. Mm. So when we talk about sacrifices there, there's been times in my life where I've wanted to to do things and, and more for the family, but I, I had to try and see the, the bigger picture like my dad installed me from, from a young age. Mm. It's so important that you, you say that, but it's always so weird because it feels like what you're saying is almost really like hitting home at, at, at the same time because it, it's it's true what you're saying. Like a lot of these things are, are, are a bonus at times. You know, we, we work so much to have these things. And I think for me, being in a position that I got into with being stand up and in TV, is that I got into a position of like, I can buy the gums I want to buy. I can go into the shops. I can afford to be here. I can go to these places. And it's until you go, you're like, this isn't me. I'm chasing something, which is 
Then it make me happy for five minutes. And then after that, I'm like, I don't want that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, the things that make me happy now is so... Like, I'll say to people, it's like, like, I love... One of my favourite things is, you know, we're here tonight up the creek. I love putting on a small show here. 50 people. You can give me 20 people. I will not want to leave the stage. Ask the guys here. You know, you think, man, I need to go, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Before minutes concert. Go, go, go. Yeah. And one, I love comedy. That's given me my personality. It's been able to make me travel, meet the people who are in my life today. But going home, watching like the TV, chilling with my girlfriend, and just that for me is is it? Is it? I used to be young at a point where I was like, "Yeah, I want to go out raving," and then be in the rave and be tired. Do you know how stressful that is when there's a banging tune and you're like, <laughs> so "I, I want to go home, boy." And I think it's it, it definitely comes with maturity, hundred um, percent. But it's always interesting when you do get to that point and you realize it, you know, because sometimes you do it, you don't realize it. Or even like like small things like Christmas, just, just want to give people their presents and just see their reactions, whether they like it or not. Sometimes when they don't like it, I'm like, boy, yeah. you got a receipt. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, it's the really small moments of life that really make you enjoy living it as such. And it is, you know, for everyone, they will get there at different points. But it's so interesting you say that because as you're saying it, I'm like, yeah, that's like me, boy. I just, I just like doing that. You see, the other day I was craving, what was I craving? A Tango Ice Blaster. I drove 45 minutes to get a Tango Ice Blaster, sat in my car, and I was like, I said, oh, man, that's all I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is all I wanted. That's all you needed. <laughs> yeah, bro. Now, if that was me three years ago, man would have bought a Tango Ice Blaster machine. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be exactly. like, <laughs> Tango Ice Blaster for everyone, cuz. But it was just like, let me just go shop. Just buy a Tango Ice Blaster. That, that's all I wanted. And it just made me so happy. There's those, those small things, you know. I wanted to ask you a little bit about how it was when you, you know, you're at Man City, you know, you're playing. It's the last game of the season. It's you and United. Now, this really brings me a bit of joy, yeah, because obviously I'm an Arsenal fan. I've got a lot of friends who support United, and and I was I remember this day very vividly because I think Arsenal we were trying to get trying to get top four at the time with Russell. Like, hey, hey, we got top four. We won that. Yeah, we got top, top four. Top. Basically, our little trophy for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> now it's the end of the season. It's at Man City United. You know, this is the last day of the season. Man City need to win. United need to win. So that, what is going through your mind when you're playing this game? Is is two two? Yeah. You're drawing with QPR. All teams. QPR. <laughs> <laughs> Whole season. <laughs> you me did nothing. But now today, <laughs> and then because I, I I remember watching it. I think it was on BT Football Focus. They're showing each bits and stuff. So it's two two. What is going through your mind at that point? Because you say, yeah, you know, winning, winning the Premier League. What what's happening? What's going on? What is the moment? You know what? I was I was I was annoyed because I got injured, put my hamstring mm. about four or five games before. And I played the majority of that season, like I mentioned. Mm. So then like, I was I wasn't saying I was bitter, but you know what? I can be honest about thing. I was I was disappointed that I wasn't starting. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because like everyone says it's a team sport and all that, but it's not. It's it's individual within within a team. Do you know what I mean? You're trying to be the best you can be. 100%. But you're trying to do that for the team, of course. So then, like, let's have a letter score the first, the first goal. And it's like, I'm on the bench. Like, what, how, how unlucky is this? You know yeah. what I mean? That could be you. That could have been me. <laughs> could have been me again. Let's have a letter again. Why? Yeah. Anybody in? It should have been why always me. It should have been why always with me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Instead of Mario. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like I was, the emotions were, went from sort of, should have been playing this to then, actually, I don't care because we're winning this. Mm. Then they score, Mm -hmm. but then they score again. But then Big Jekyll, Mm. one of the most underrated players in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. And I felt like he gets the head of the ring. 
and then Aguero. So like Mar- Mario as well, a lot before. So, before, so do, do you know the score at this time? It's got to be United at some point. So no, we don't know nothing. We don't okay. know nothing. We don't know nothing about like, because Mancini was like, there's always people who look, but Mancini was like, don't look at any score. Concentrate on the game. Do you know what I mean? Because don't forget, like, this was, we were supposed to win this game 5-0. Yeah. It was tense to see the people that was beating up in the seats in the crowd. Yeah. Like, what's going on here? But can you hear it from the crowd? It's crazy. It's just, no, it's, you can hear like, it was silent. Okay. It was silent. Yeah. Imagine 50,000 people, but it's silent. Yeah. It must be mad because that's 50,000 people coming to be like, I'm going to be here the, the day we win it. But now you're losing 2-1. And there's some City fans of the some City fans still believe in because like City in the history have been known to let let themselves down but then have magical moments. Mm. So like some City fans who are still believing. So when Jekyll like, scored, like it's just started people are starting to stand up in their seats like yeah. if you do this. Mm. Then like before that I mean Balotelli warming up and Balotelli said to me, because like, I'm like I'm like in tears at this point, me personally, I'm like we're blowing it away like I'm probably not going to win a Premier League game. This is probably my only chance. So then, um, but uh, Baratelli said, uh, "Yeah, don't worry. When I go on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna score. I'm gonna set one up. I'm gonna win this. Don't worry." And I swear, which is what he said. I swear, because he just like he just like different like the way he thinks. Mm. He's just so confident yeah. and he believes in his ability to the max. Mm. So then, like, come on. And then, because now that, it's like you're in like it's, yeah, 80, deep, 90 for minutes. Now. Yeah, the, yeah, 80, 90 minutes. But then after Jekyll has gone, what was it, 90, 93, 93rd minute, 93, 20, something like that. Balotelli, his only assist he's had for, for Man City, never had an assist in his life. Yeah. He's not passed the ball. Yeah. He passes to Aguero. Yeah. And Aguero just like. When the ball went to Aguero, was you knew that was going to go in the back of his 100%. Head. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Mm. But he seemed like the way he took, he took a little touch, like a lot of strikers would have hit it first. He took that extra touch mm. and then put it like near post. I was just like, this guy is just, that was all emotions. It could, you know what it was? When that, when that moment came up, I had like a, like a flashback to when I was like young. It sounds mm. weird. It's not like a film, you know what I mean? Like, but you know yeah, everything's yeah, yeah. forced. Mm. A flashback. Mm. And it was just like, and I don't really get like emotional. Like, I'm, I'm just always happy. I'm just like, but like, it made me emotional. Like, everything that I've been working for had come together. Mm. And like, my dad's in the crowd and whatnot. And he, he never really, like, shows emotion. But he could see it in his face this time that he was, he was proud and that, all, that, was, that, was, that was enough for me to come on the pitch and everything. Wow. Uh, it was just, man, and then the place just, erupted it was like wow mm. and it was the greatest moment of, of my life to be part of that team mm. it was just it was amazing best day of my life and what a way to win it though <sighs> like over your arch rivals and scoring in the last time almost like the last kick of the game it, you know it's funny mm. though because we've seen it we've seen it afterwards like you, you guys were celebrating well not you guys man united were, were celebrating weren't they? <laughs> yeah yeah so you're like i said see phil jones and he's He'd heard the news, <laughs> but we only see this like later on. Yeah. So like they was winning up until that point. They was they was done, mm. and then to win it like that on the last day, mm. on the last minute of the game. You can't, if you were, if you write that as a book, you just think it's far fetched. Yeah. It's just stupid. Like you know what, I mean? what was that uh, football program called when we was younger? Do you remember? It? I can't remember what it was called. And they always used to score in the last last minute. Oh. Something ridiculous. <laughs> I like, used to watch this, you're like, this is never going to happen. Uh, Redford Regis. Yeah, no, no. I remember Redford Regis. There was another one, a cartoon for that one. I but I remember Redford Regis. Yeah, that, yeah, that, 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 that was ridiculous. That time was better. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like that, though. It was a ridiculous program, though. Ridiculous. The Black Heat was the reporter. <laughs> <laughs> the dress. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when that happened in the last minute, you're thinking, nah, it's, it's, it's far-fetched, but it happened. Mm. The greatest day of my life, man. And how is it looking it's, back at that? Because you see that clip. It's, I think, it, you know, it's, it's up there as one of the greatest sporting moments in the history of sports. If you, you know, you tell people the story behind it, arch rivals, the first ever Premier League title in history, 
it's it's up there with, with any. I think what I always like about sports, there's moments in sport. Sometimes I I was I might not have been around to witness it, but watching it back, I feel oh God, I feel nervous watching this. I I'm not, I was watching um, the last dance, with Michael Michael Green. and there's times I'm watching that and I'm like, I know what's gonna happen already. But even like, oh my God, and then what? And then he what? He wasn't well. And they had to go, oh my God. And I, and I feel like, this is just me watching it back now in the documentary, let alone living it, breathing it, and, and feeling it. You know, you, you spoke about some of your members that you played with in that squad. You know, What was it playing like with Balotelli? Honestly, what a guy. Yeah. He's just like, you know, like he's one of the people who like joke, but then he just carries on the joke. He doesn't know when to say no, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's just, like, it's such a nice, like, humble character in terms of, like, charity work and stuff like that. But it was just like, he was only young when he came to Man City. What was he, 19, 20, something like that. And I just, I loved him. I loved him. Him and Mancini, like, was crazy. They just used to argue every day in training. <laughs> every, no, I'm not talking every day, every day in training. <laughs> like, but, like, nearly come to, like, like, fighting, do you know yeah. what I mean? But Mancini, like, loved him. And he got away with like murder yeah. because he just, he seen his potential. And like some of the, some of the crazy stories about him, like a lot of them are true. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not, even, it's not even one of them where, oh, they're talking nonsense, it's true. Like, a, a lot of them are true. But, <laughs> but you can't like, he, he's, 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 his heart, he's got a heart of gold. Mm-hmm. He'll do anything for, for anyone. Yeah. So when people try to say, He's, in, he's not. In, he's not. In, he just takes a joke too far. Mm. And all you know, like we all do things, and there's always one who gets caught. Yeah. He always gets caught, mm. and he just. But like he, he was one of my favorite people. I still speak to him now. Yeah, one of my favorite people of all time. And speak to me about your your touring because I was at I was at soccer aid, and we were talking about expos, and a lot of the players were talking about Yaya Torre's ability. Of like, whew, playing against that guy, you know, Rio said it recently that that guy playing with him, playing against him, sorry, was just different level. What was it like being in a squad with Yaya Toure? Him and David Silva, the best two players um, for, for City. One, you know, Aguero scores goal, but Yaya Toure was just, you know, like he was like a complete player. He was fast, mm. he was strong, he was intelligent, he had technique. He could shoot, he could defend, he could do everything. Right, and I'm just thinking like, how have we managed to get this, this player here? Mm. And like, if, if if he would have been there probably a bit longer, he, he probably would have went down as the best ever player in City's history. Mm. You know, Silva was there a little bit longer than him. Um, Kevin De Bruyne is doing mad, madness at the moment. Bits. But, but Yaya Torre, like, he could win a game by himself. Mm. Anyway, like scoring free kick, like running from like from one box to the other, mm. like and it was weird because Yaya Torre like he he wasn't arrogant, but he had like if you said certain things to him, like he just not look down at you, but just like look at you, like what you're talking about. But as it got like as he like got to know him more, mm. like he proper opened up mm. and he had good banter, he had everything, and it was just like. It was an honour to play with. I never thought I would play with that calibre of player. Yeah, it's yeah. just incredible. He's an incredible player. Like, like Steve Steve Gerrard's a big shout because Steve Gerrard did it consistently for in the Premier League for a while. Mm. But in terms of you know like having everything, yeah, yeah, it's always right up there. Yeah. It's so I I am re- I'm, I I'm always in awe. Of listening to expos speak of just how the game was, how they play, because it's so fun to hear it now that it's not now that, now that you've finished playing football, but we as fans don't get to hear you speak like this when you're playing football. So when you're saying this stuff now, we could I could sit here for three hours and just ask you. So what was um, <laughs> what was moment like? <laughs> But it's honestly like Mika, man. It's like you're someone who's very like. He's, he's, I've never. This is the first time we proper met. We spoke a few times on um, online um, and stuff. 
It was the first time, but I feel like I've met you for a long, long time. And you're very like you're very you're a very warm, like nice person. You know what I mean? Like you're a very warm, good to do person, you know. And it's really interesting what you're doing now, you know, especially as a pundit as well. You know, you got this documentary, mm-hmm. you know, where you're speaking about racism within the game. Mm-hmm. Um has that how has that has that affected you as a footballer? You know, racism because you said you were speaking about coaching and you know, there isn't any there isn't any black coaches in the Premier League, you know. Um I don't I, I don't want to be the person to say that's down to racism. Um is the game ready for that? Is that someone that's gonna get scrutinized as a as a black manager or are they just gonna be a manager? Do you know what I mean? Um what's your thoughts? It's, it, it's it's a sensitive issue, isn't it? because mm. uh, not a lot of people like to talk about it or are uncomfortable talking about it. Um the Wolves manager Fairness, he's he's well, he's African, so he considers himself as being in that in the black uh, category. But yeah, it's in in football. I've had racism all my life. Yeah. But you know, we're young. You know, don't talk about me from Chapel Town. If someone's racist, you just want to fight him. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you have to like the older you get, the wiser you become. Yeah. Um, and it, and it is it is difficult in certain aspects because sometimes you see players with not the same ability getting better chances, mm. and you know a lot of people said when they was growing up they felt like they had to be twice or three times as good to get an opportunity, which in some cases. It's correct, but when someone's races now, I I tend to ask them like, or try ask them what, what's going in their mind because it's 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 easy to just call someone a racist, you know what I mean? And, and, and racist is a, is a strong is a strong term, and, and no one likes that word, and no one even when people say well, that wasn't racist, like they're already on the, on the back foot because mm. it's it's one of them issues that. It's, it's it's difficult. It's a fine line between getting the the, the right wording. Mm-hmm. And I've had I've had racism all through my life, from getting on the train, from uh, social media. Mm. From, Did you ever have it as a player when you was playing? You know what? That that's crazy. I had a couple of like maybe monkey shouts, but I've never me physically had it as a, as a player, which is. Mm. Uh, there was a couple, I think it was uh, under 21s in, in Germany or whatnot, but I think that was more collective. But I've never had someone, never said on the football field anything racist to me um, professionally. When I was young, it was Leeds, and I was the only black guy in the team. Like, my dad was on the side, Bob Marley, music with the plane and whatnot. Mm. And like, you hear people like, who's that black guy over there? But when I was young, I didn't really, I didn't really understand it. I didn't really... No, I just, I used to take it on a chin and we talk about it, dad's before. Dad didn't really speak to me about certain issues. Mm. You know, I've, I've got a documentary out now, like highlighting some, and it's not, I've got a documentary not to blame anyone because some of the most prominent people in my life have been white. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes when the race issue is mentioned, like it, some people feel like, oh, they're, they're tarnishing everyone with the same brush. You know what I mean? And that's not what I want to do. My my role is to understand why people think that way and, yeah. and try to educate them to why this is happening mm. and give them examples as to, well, this is what I'm going... Because a lot of people say, like, you know what I hate the most is when someone says that, oh, he's playing the race card. What does a race card even mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And that, that hurts me deep. You know what I mean? That's what I was like. Well, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, here, we go. <laughs> here we go. He's preaching again. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like... Forget, forget that for one minute. Just like listen to what what I'm saying. And racism in football will, will, will always be there, probably in our lifetime. But it's getting better. Mm. It, it really is getting better. And I, I, I wish, like my good friends with Joe Hart and James Milner, and and I've I've opened their eyes up to, to loads of different things, and and they're willing to learn. You know what I mean? I'm willing to understand like what black people have to go through in, in everyday life, but it's a it's a it's a conversation that 
needs to be ongoing. It's not about when I made this documentary, it's not about, you know, I'm docking it because I'm, I'm trying to get my name out there or anything like that. It's just like someone that's come from my heart. The money that I, um, I'm made for is going to, to charity anyway. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in for a long run. I'm not just here to, because you see these people that come on the scene and they've, they've got this motive. Like, I've, I've got enough money. I don't need to make no more money. Like I said, if we talk about content, I'm content. Yeah. But it's about helping not just black people. Black people can, of course, they've got to help the black community. But it's helping about everyone in society to, to try think a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. And that, I think that's the, that's where it comes a little bit sticky as well because sometimes when you shout racism, then it causes a little bit of a divide mm-hmm. when it needs to be more. No, I'm not trying to divide people. I'm just trying to educate. Sh- them, like, educate exactly, exactly yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sad, man. Because I, I seen a quote where you said, you know, with this documentary, it's about, you know, the, the, this new young generation that are watching football. It's about educating them. That older generation, they're, it's, it's, it's a lost cause at times. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, like, if the older generation, are you going to change their mind? Probably not. Mm. So that, that's, that's, to- that's totally fine. You know, it's free speech. You can think what you think. But when the, play- the, the players are kneeling and the, young, the younger generation asking them, oh, why are you kneeling? It's just for, for equality mm. within society. Simple as that. It's not about Black Lives Matter, the political movement. It's just about equality. Simple as that. Mm. And, that and that you teach your kids, and that's and that's how how we learn. Mm. Uh, we can't do nothing with you know generations above us because they've already made that mind up. But they can. It's about the next generation. Everyone's always talking about when people, you know, you ask me a question like, yeah, I'll answer on behalf of me, but I've, I've got to think about the next generation because that's what we're sending the information to, you know what I mean? They'll be on the, on the earth longer than us. Yeah, it's yeah. about setting that example mm-hmm. for, for them. That's that's the most important thing to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing it as well because it's so nice to see, you know, you, you can do the punditry stuff, you know, you've done the, you've played football, but it's really good to see when you are in that position, especially, you know, what it's like when you're from the black community, they're like, cool, I see man on the TV, but come on, big man, like, do something for the community, innit? And it's having these opportunities where you're like, you know, you could make a, a, a fun TV show. You and Reiki on, on the road trip adventure, which everyone's talking about. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I would love to see that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> but at the same time, if you can create something like this and it can change even just one person's mindset, you're just like, that was so much, That that's what it's for. That's, that's what it's worth doing it for. Do you know what I mean? Right, but... Exactly that. It's I'm the reason why I believe it was a success of documentaries because it was just real to me. Mm. It's not about pleasing anyone. Or it's not about getting plaudits or whatnot. Like I've watched it and I'm happy. You know, I interviewed you know Gary Neville who was amazing on it. Andy Cole, like some of, some of these legends, are, the Stoke uh, women as, as a black woman in, in women's football, always gonna be gonna be tough. So. It's it's not just about my opinion or what I've been through. They're giving their opinions of what they've been through or, as well. So it, it was nice. I thought the balance of it was was, was really good. Um, but you know, I have to reiterate, I'm not trying to to, to blame anyone because you know we was brought up how we you know in a, in a, in a Rastafarian household, not being told we love. So if someone's been told, or uh, you know, black. You know, black people are this, or black people are that. Can can you blame that person? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, can, you, can, you, you have to understand why they think that. Mm-hmm. And I think nowadays we're too much judgmental or the racist, the racist, the racist. Mm-hmm. Like, they might be and cool. Like I'd be the first one to stand up if someone's racist, especially mm-hmm. with my my you know the, the profile I'm, I'm having on these on these networks, of course. But I don't like we don't want to. Sort of soften the, the way you want so much racist, want it to be proper because otherwise, people again are going to say, Oh, here we go again. Mm. And that's the that's what I'm trying to get. And anything I can do to to help in my community, I, I will do because I know it's important. Mm. It really is. No, oh, man, Mika, Mika, man, you're you're just good vibes, man. <laughs> always good you're vibes. The, you're just good vibes, man. And it's so like, honestly, man, like. It's such a pleasure for you coming on this pod as well, because I don't know. You just seem like good vibes, man. 
And you know the amount of times people, <laughs> this was a random white guy, who's like, man, Mo Gilligan, he don't know I'm not like that, Lincoln Richards. <laughs> what the hell, but he's kept me having it, I've seen it. A couple cats and all that. <laughs> he don't know I'm not like brothers. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Your dad's a wrestler. He's dead. To They've got me. You've got to be brothers. Oh, man. I was getting that so much, man. Yeah. You can't say you don't know. I'm like, make Richards, Mo Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But honestly, it's been such a, a pleasure having you on the podcast. Just proper. This is the first time we probably connected, just proper, like, meeting you in the flesh and stuff. And honestly, I just really want the, the best for you, like doing this punditry stuff, because you're you're just a, you're just a joy to watch. Sometimes, you know, I'll be watching games that I don't really watch, but it's nice to have a bit of um um you know humanity in it. Do you know what I mean? Just someone just laughing, having good vibes, but can still do a, the professional job. You know what I mean? So um yeah, it's been a it's been a pleasure. Thanks Thank you for coming on the podcast and. Yeah, man. Next time we just hang out, get a couple of cans. Come on, look at Get a couple of cans. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you love that one, bro. When you walk in the room, <laughs> get a couple of cans. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> but nah, man. Guys, uh, if you did enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe. Um, yeah, and don't forget to use the hashtag, the Mo Gilligan Podcast. Take care. Peace.